Hi, Jay Zaring from Jay Zaring Studios. Today I'm going to show you how I uh, make a 360 degree panorama and this is mainly going to be for posting to Facebook and other networks that will allow a 360 degree, 60 degree image. This is not going to be for the spherical. The spherical is a whole different thing. So I'm going to focus mainly on just the 360 degree panorama. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like in Lightroom. Here's a, just a bunch of shots here. Uh, it doesn't really look like a whole lot until it's put together, but uh, this is what it looks like apart. And you can see my daughter, my daughter's hood is in some of them. So I just uh, cloned that out. No matter which way I pointed the tripod, she seemed to get right in front of it. So it's a snow day. So she definitely had to be outside with me. And here we're in the, I'm in the middle of the woods here. Uh, Cause I really wanted to get a good shot, a good, very large 360 and, and a panorama of just all the trees completely covered like this. It just, it's really neat. And here's like the third one. I believe I did three. Uh, I did a lower and an upper. So you get the vertical as well as the 360 degrees. And there, that's just a shot of a branch just so I could get that in focus and a, a nice blur in the background. There's my happy little girl <laughs> having her snow day. Um, so that's, that's it on to the next step, I guess. Okay. Now I'm going to open it up in a program called PT GUI, which, uh, is really, really fast and easy to combine your images for 360. I would use Photoshop, but it just, it takes a little bit more work to do the same thing. And I'm a little bit jealous of everybody just using, just using their cell phones to do it. Uh, but the difference here is, uh, I created an image that is well over a gigapixel so I can choose when I'm done, basically how, how much sh I shrink it down and it'll allow me to have a bit more detail. So here we go. I'm going to open this up. You want to go to load images and here we go. I don't know which one I want to do first here. I think I'll do the difficult one. This one, uh, my tripod was really straight when I started and I started at the, uh, pine trees you'll see here in a minute. But what happened was as I spun the tripod around and it's a really good tripod, it's not the tripod's fault. Uh, the ground I was sitting on was uneven and it just, it just didn't work out panning, uh, a full 360 degrees. So what it's going to look like probably, as you can see from these images, it's going to look like a kind of a, a series of mountains or a caterpillar, if you will. So now I click, Align images, and this is 23 full frame, uh, 6,016 by 4,016 images. And then what you want to do here is edit entire panorama selected. Otherwise you're just going to be moving individual photos and I just grab here pull it up to kind of straighten it out. Do the best you can here. And you can see my barn. I'm trying to pay attention to the barn that the barn is straight. So, so then you want to take your top and bottom. If you just grab at the top here, it gives you this little yellow line. Just pull this down basically until you don't see a void anymore. Those little, squares where it's just uh, transparent. And then you do the same thing from the bottom. And this program will automatically, I've uploaded two so far as a test. Uh, it does work with Facebook, even though Facebook is kind of, uh, was kind of finicky at first with 360, but 
this will work on on Facebook. <clears throat> so now I'm going to go to Tools, Show in Viewer, and select Open PT GUI Viewer. It's, that's the way you'll see it. And it's real low, really, really low resolution when you're previewing. And I suppose that's good because you can actually preview without any problems. And I actually don't see any problems here. Where I stopped over here, try to get to that spot. Where I stopped was this bush right here. And you can see it did an amazing job of lining everything up. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go back here, create pano. And it's 35,169 pixels by 5,864. Facebook will not like that. So I'm gonna drop it down to, let's say 8,000. And if you have trouble, the ones I uploaded so far were 6,000 to be safe, but Facebook's compression for images is pretty terrible. So this time I'm going to try uploading at 8,000. If it rejects it, I'm going to bump it back down to 6,000. But uh, I guess you'll find out from this video because I'm going to do I'm doing this all in real time here. So now you click create panorama, and there you go. That's what it looks like. I'm actually going to take this into Photoshop because I do want to add some clarity and uh, add uh, just brighten it up just a tad. But uh, I normally wouldn't do that to a JPEG. This does get output, output to a JPEG. But what you want to do, since it's formatted with metadata that Facebook recognizes, you do not want to copy it into another document, into a new document, because it loses all that met metadata. You want to keep it, if you cho choose to edit it in Photoshop or your editing program, make sure you save it into the same file. Or Facebook may reject it. More than likely it will reject it. So what you're about to see is something I do to a lot, and I mean a lot, of images that are landscape like this just to add a little bit of clarity and sharpening without noise and uh, i'm going to go back to tobaz labs again they make i in my opinion some of the best plugins for photoshop that they're, they're really high quality and i'm going to open topaz adjust there's a preset default preset that I usually adjust but you don't have to you can adjust it but it's a really good preset for just bringing out a little bit of extra quality and I'm going to zoom in so you can see this try 100% here and I'm going to when I click it you will see the before when I let go you'll see the after Here's before and here's after. You can see what a huge difference it makes. And this line, this tree line here, really makes that stick out against the sky. And I do wish the sky were a little bit more blue, but that's how it looked today again. Uh, until closer to sunset where it was absolutely gorgeous. So gonna click okay on that. And I'm just going to control S, save, go to my Jay Zaring Photography Facebook page. You can do this with pages, just like uh, an individual user. Just click on write something, click photo, click your panorama, and we'll see if this, uh, if this 8,000 pixel wide image works with Facebook. But, uh, it automatically recognizes it. I'm going to zoom in here. It automatically recognizes it as a 360 degree photo because uh, the program PT GUI creates the metadata to tell Facebook, hey, this is a 360 and a whole lot of other things 
that I don't really know about it. Uh, it's, it's, there's some code involved. All I know is it makes it work and that makes me happy. Then what you want to do is you just type in whatever you want to type. Uh, wait for Facebook to load it and you can pick a thumbnail that people see by default. And because there's a really cool barn in this with some pine trees, that's what I'm going to do. And you just click edit 360 settings. Scroll on over to your spot where it looks the coolest, the most appealing, and then hit save and publish. And it did accept my 8,000 pixel wide photo. So that makes me very happy. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments or anywhere at the end of this video, you'll see links to every everywhere on social networking that I am. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and tell your friends. Keep creating and keep it awesome.